Good morning, everyone. Welcome to this webinar sharing featuring the interdisciplinary educational pathways, global exploration, and career opportunities that you can look forward to here at NUS. I'm Eunice, and I will be your MC for today. Thank you for taking time to join us. The sharing you will hear this morning will be jointly presented by the Dean of Admissions, Professor Bill Faisal, Associate Vice President of the Global Relations Office, Professor Lab Talki, and Senior Director of the NUS Center for Future Ready Graduates, Ms. Joan Tay. After the presentations, there will be a Q&A segment with our speakers. If you have any questions, we greatly appreciate if you could please write them down in the Q&A tab below, and we will answer them towards the Q&A segment of this webinar. Thank you for your patience. Professor Goldie Song is the Dean of Admissions at the National University of Singapore. A mathematician by training who received his Bachelor Honours degree from the University of Oxford in 1988 and his Master's of Science and PhD degree from the University of Michigan and Harvard in 1990 and 1992, respectively. He joined the NUS Department of Mathematics in 1994 and he is highly passionate about education and has received numerous teaching awards, including the University Outstanding Educator Award in 2009. His research interests are on the theory and applications of wavelets, approximation theory, and harmonic analysis, and he also participates in interdisciplinary research involving the practical use of mathematics. Associate Professor Lam Tao Kim is the Associate Vice President to NUS Global Relations. Prior to her appointment at NUS Global, Slam was the Assistant Dean at the former School of Design and Environment. Currently, she is also a resident fellow at Bridgeview Residential College. Prof. Lam teaches real estate finance and securitization as a faculty member of the NUS Business School and is a winner of several teaching awards. Her research interests cover the areas of housing and land policy, index construction and green finance, and Prof. Lam developed the official suite of indices for the housing sector, Singapore housing sector. She has also consulted for various organizations, including Citibank, GIC, Housing and Development Board, Ministry of Housing of the Kingdom of Saudi Arabia, Ministry of Law of Singapore, Singapore Land Authority, and Urban Redevelopment Authority. She currently sits on the Evaluation Review Board of the Ministry of Finance. Ms. Joan Tay is the Senior Director for the Center of Future Ready Graduates, CFG for short, at NUS, and leads a talented team of career advisors, industry insiders, L&D enthusiasts, tech and marketing evangelists at CFG. Together, they empower students to be bold in pursuing their aspirations, and not to be reined in by traditional pathways. Nurturing students' potential and well-being, Ms. Tay collaborates with industry partners and faculty stakeholders to create a supportive ecosystem for students throughout their time at the university. At my CFG's Career Readiness Roadmap, students discover the strengths and increase their confidence. They learn to transform their fears and overcome obstacles to forge ahead in a competitive job market, elevating themselves amidst change and complexity. Without further ado, let us begin the session and may I invite Prof Go to begin the session, please. Prof Go, please. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Eunice. And uh, it's a great pleasure to have all of you in uh, this morning's webinar. And uh, especially, I have two very uh, good colleagues together with me, Professor Lam uh, on the Global Relations Office and Ms. John Tay from the Center for Future Ready Graduates. Now, because today's theme of the webinar is going to be about interdisciplinary education pathway for global aspiration and career readiness. So I'm going to frame today's uh, discussion and today for of this particular session along the topics of interdisciplinary pathways, global aspiration, career readiness, and with the overarching theme about experiential learning. So let me pull my slides up and then we'll get going. Okay, so let, let's get going. And uh, let me first welcome you again to the NUS experience. And uh, this is a snapshot of the what NUS has to offer. And we are a research intensive, comprehensive university. We are all, because every year we're taking more than 7,000 undergraduate students. So we are able to offer a wide range of bachelor's degree program, more than 60 of them. And we have very vibrant student life with more than 2,000 clubs and societies and interest groups. So my focus 
for this morning session is that apart from academics, about talking about the variety of uh, combinations of interdisciplinary education, I'm going to focus on the last two columns. One, global exposure. We have more than 200 partner universities in over 40 countries. About the employability of our graduates, which are consistently within top 10 for global employability. Now, let me give you an overview about the kind of undergraduate degree programs we offer. We have essentially anything that you desire to study, essentially. Now, if you're interested in humanities and sciences, we have different majors in arts and social sciences, different majors in science, and we even have cross-disciplinary program that integrates two, two disciplines together. Like, for example, data science and economics, that, that it integrates data science, which is in science, and economics in social sciences together. We have, you know, environmental studies, again, uh, one aspect is in the scientific aspect, uh, like in life sciences. The other aspect, like in geography, that is environmental studies. And we have PPE, three different areas in uh, social sciences that you combine them together. Philosophy, politics, and economics. For students who are interested in engineering, they can pursue a major in design and engineering. And even for the uh, and for the design majors, you can have architecture, landscape architecture, industrial design, majors in engineering, practical, practically every single areas that you can think of, we actually have it under College of Design and Engineering. NUS Business School, there are nine different majors. I'll talk a little bit more about this. And uh, Prof. Sao, uh, Prof. Lam is also from NUS Business School and she can tell you more as well if you ask uh, during the Q&A session. School of Computing, there are four different majors and we have medicine, dentistry and law and we even have a music school and we have nursing and pharmacy for the healthcare professionals. Now, what is the hallmark of the NUS education? That is the focus that I want to talk about. Now, essentially, every school, every faculty will have a common curriculum. The common curriculum will actually face, uh, form the baseline of uh, the foundational knowledge for that faculty. And our common curriculum is tailor-made for that faculty that you are interested in. Like for example, we have a common curriculum for humanities and sciences. We have another different uh, some overlap, but different common curriculum in design and engineering. Another set for business, another set for computing. So we make sure that our common curriculum is suitable for that particular faculty. And then we have what we call the major requirements. Every student will have a major. Now, major is essentially 15 to 20 courses out of a total of 40 courses a student would do. And you may wonder, why is that number rather small? The, the number is not that small, but it's sufficient to have a major. But more importantly, we deliberately created space under unrestricted electives, 10 to 20 courses. And that is what I want to emphasize to provide the interdisciplinary flexible pathway. And I will elaborate more later on. And we are big on experiential learning, internship, and what you learn, like you go for field trip, you go for overseas exposure. And this is how this flexible pathway works. Uh, the, uh, for an undergraduate education, typically 40 courses. One course, four units, a total of 160 units. The baseline is the common curriculum. So the common curriculum has two aspects. One is the general education university requirements, six courses. After that, each faculty has their own, which is the faculty or the college requirements. That forms the foundation, the common curriculum. For students who are interested for a certain major, then that is the major requirements, and then there is a space of unrestricted electives. Students can do anything they desire. It could be randomly different courses from different faculties. But some students want to be very specific. They want to go deep in the subject. Let's say you aspire to be a mathematician. So you want to go deep in mathematics. So it's possible that you use your entire unrestricted elective space to do courses 
in mathematics. So you become a deep specialist in mathematics. The other way is that some students want to do a double major. Instead, you use the space that you have for unrestricted electives and you do a second major. Let's say you are a business student and your major is in finance, but you want to do a second major in applied business analytics. That is possible. And that is where we have this double major combination. But you can also do, instead of a second major, you do a minor. Second major has more intensity than a minor, but you want to have a taste of it. Then you can do a minor, let's say the same business student, but this time around, instead of a second major in applied business analytic, you do a minor in applied business analytic. You still have some space to take something else, let's say in economics to com complement your study. Or you can even do a minor in economics. So it doesn't have to be the same faculty for the major, minor one, minor two. You have complete flexibility. And this is the kind of flexible and multiple pathways we are looking at. And just now I've already alluded on this example about business. NUS Business School this year, they launched a new curriculum that has a common curriculum. At the same time, they repackage their BBA majors. Now, there is a common admission pathway. On the application forms, you will see the, the degree program called Business Administration. Now, for those students in previous years that we have applied and you actually see that they can apply to a business administration, bracket accountancy, real estate, where are business, uh, accountants, uh, business administration, bracket accountancy, and real estate? They are all under the common admission business administration course. And under this business administration course, now there's a total of nine different majors. Accountancy, real estate are all majors under that. And how it works is that under the common admission structure, we give students more choices, more flexibility. Students will indicate their preferred major. You can indicate preferred major as real estate, accountancy, or finance. After that, when you enter uh, uh, into the uh, university, and then after maybe just before matriculation, you change your mind. You don't want to do finance. You want to do marketing. No problem. No further selection. Students will be automatically granted this accordingly. And you can change your major up to the fourth semester. Now, we deliberately created a bigger space now on unrestricted electives because we want to provide multiple pathways to the student. Now, the students could use the unrestricted elective space, which is 40 to 48 units. That is the equivalent of 10 to 12 courses. You can use this to do a second BBA major. Like what I mentioned just now, finance together with applied business analytics. That can be done or you can do a BBA minor instead. And if you aspire to do something that is outside business school, we are one NUS, no problem. You are allowed to do a second major or minor outside business school as well. And how can you further enhance your undergraduate experience with the flexibility that we are giving our students? Another possibility is joining NUS college. NUS college, by itself, it actually provides 14 courses, not for the major, but actually enhancing the major. The major requirements is still exactly the same as any student uh, in the university. No change. Then what has changed is that uh, you use up some of the unrestricted elective space to take the NUS college curriculum. And some of the NUS college curriculum can also be used to replace the common curriculum of your faculty. So in that case, the student will be able to fit the NUS college curriculum into what they're going to study. And there is still some space left for unrestricted electives to even do a second major or a minor. And, and what's so unique about the NUS college curriculum is one, this is interdisciplinary. This is broad-based. 
at the same time, it incorporate residential stay at least two years on campus into the curriculum. And more interestingly, not only is interdisciplinary, there's a global orientation as well. You can even connect up with the uh, study abroad program. And some students want to have another aspect of experiential learning, research. Now, in research, sometimes uh, in some university, in order to do research, you can only explore when you are in graduate school. But in NUS, we allow students to do research as an undergraduate as early as the second year. Go to a professor and uh, that, that you are interested to work with in your second year, you can actually uh, work in his lab and under our undergraduate research opportunity program. And some students like it very much. They actually return to, to do it again in the second year. And the third and then the fourth year, usually there's a final year project and you get to do research again. That is another aspect that is actually learning be, uh, beyond just uh, coursework, beyond the classroom. And of course, learning is not just based on academic causes. You can also have an active opportunity to learn when you are staying on campus. Uh, where are the places that students stay on campus? There are actually five different places that you can, different types of on-campus accommodation that you will actually develop your soft skill, your life skill, and actually you get to live and learn and work together with students from different disciplines, different faculties. And the traditional places that one may stay is the halls of residence. These are standard, uh, these are places that has been around for a long time, long tradition, a place to stay, and uh, a lot of interesting developing activities. Residential colleges is the other type. And residential colleges, you have a place to stay, you have activities. At the same time, you take four courses that can be counted towards the common curriculum. NUS College is a separate one. And that one, because the curriculum, the academic component is actually not four courses, but 14 courses. Students wanted to have less activities. They may consider the student residences in their subsequent years. And the last type is about mentorship and well-being. And that is the concept of houses. So students actually can choose all these different places to learn beyond the academics. And now I'm going to pass the time to Prof Lam will tell you about what other aspect of learning. You know, they're still learning about global aspiration. They're still learning about career preparation. So I will first now, now pass the time off to Prof Lam. Prof Lam, please. Oh, hello, everybody. While well, we get our sorts, uh, our slides sorted out, and there you go, right? Um, so I apologize for a very, very boring CV about myself. And here's what is more exciting. So I want to bring to you a message about NUS Global. And uh, the great thing about uh, education nowadays is that you don't really have to travel out the way I had to when I was younger. Uh, we try to bring the world to NUS. So we bring students from overseas to you and we bring you overseas. So that is the intention of setting up um, a study abroad program under NUS Global. So let's move on. Um, and um, the first thing is, um, as Prof Go was saying, uh, what, what constitutes a good learning experience? And I think uh, every good university ought to incentivize and encourage you to study abroad, right? So the first thing that you're gonna get from studying abroad is I think the chance to really develop yourself personally. You're gonna be put in a different environment. You're gonna learn with a lot of different people be exposed to a different way of life, different cultures. Uh, and I think all this is just going to give you a very, very wonderful learning experience that just probably you look back at when you're much older and you say, wow, I'm glad I did that, right? So you network, make friends. Um, I think it's something that uh, employers like to see that uh, you have enhanced your learning experience by going abroad. It's a great thing to put in your CV uh, because you're going to be meeting new people, you're forced to develop interpersonal skills, enrich yourself, and hopefully enrich the people you meet. And um, also, uh, you're going to probably learn how to communicate quite effectively in a second or even a third language. So these are all the great deliverables of uh, being in a study abroad program or go abroad yeah, program. So now, 
don't just take our word from it. Very, very uh, important people, thought leaders uh, think the same way. You are going to be our future. And we hope that uh, you are going to help us, you know, make the world a better place to live in. And as Ban Ki-moon puts it, he urges everybody to develop a global vision, go beyond your country, go beyond your national boundaries. You know that Singapore is only 700 over square kilometers. There's a lot, a lot more for you to see, right? And you do so. Now, another person, I think, uh, like Michelle Obama, it is important, of course, for you to do well in school. That uh, goes without saying. But it is a part of your learning is going to come from having very, very real, authentic experiences in the world beyond our boundaries, right? Um, you're going to interact with people and having to uh, you know, tap on some parts of you that uh, I think you will develop very well, right? It's going to be different from what you're faced with. We, we have a nice, uh, I think, diverse society here, but when you go out, you're going to be immersed into a very different setting and uh, you will profit from it. So you can take our word for it, right? So where can you go, right? If you're part of us. Now, uh, Prof Go said that uh, we have about programs with about 340 or more top universities around the world. And uh, they're distributed in a lot of countries, right? So this count here is really about the exchange programs, but we continually work to bring you richer and richer offerings. Our goal is to get everybody to go abroad if possible, yeah? Now, how do you do it? You can think about the menu this way. Uh, the global programs that are available in U.S. can be easily broken down in terms of the time frame. You have things that last two months or less and then three months to a year. So for those that are interested in a shorter exposure, you can look at what we call summer and winter programs. And by that, we mean the vacations, right? Vacation period, mid-year for summer and then winter, of course, uh, during the year end. Uh, there's something that we call STEER. STEER is a flagship of the uh, Global Relations Office. These are study trips for engagement and enrichment. I'll share more with you later on. Uh, we have something called the Tomasic Foundation and U.S. Leadership Enrichment and Regional Networking Program. So it's a long, a bit of a mouthful, but the idea here is to know that uh, Tomasic Foundation believes so much in the value of going abroad that they actually sponsor this program. And if you want to develop your leadership skills, particularly in a regional network where you're going to make friends with like-minded people, then this is the program for you. Right? In short, we call it TFNUS Learn. There are also programs that are set up by the respective Ministry of Education, uh, China and Singapore. And we have something called the Sino-Singapore Undergraduate Exchange Program that is actually cross-cultural. It takes you, takes Chinese students here, it brings you abroad, and it is also coming with uh, awards. Now, if you want to go longer, right, we have, of course, uh, something called the NUS Global Internship Program, and the duration varies. I'll let uh, my colleague, Ms. Chung Tae, tell you more about the internship opportunities. Uh, there are research attachments, and Prof. Go has told you about that. Uh, then, of course, there's something that we handle at our office called Student Exchange Programs. This takes you out for a semester or two. And then you've also uh, heard Prof. Go talk about the NUS overseas colleges, right? So all these are the offerings that we have. Now, student exchange programs, you can see that my, uh, my staff are hurrying me through, so I, I better keep pace with them. Okay, student exchange programs, right? Now, what does this mean? As I said, you could live abroad for one to two semesters, immerse yourself in a foreign university. You're going to be studying subjects unique to the choice of the destination that you've picked. Right? So they're going to be, you're going to see a menu of different universities and kind of subjects they offer. And what you're going to, what you will do is to study the, the choices presented to you, either by your faculty or at the university level, these kinds of exchange uh, courses. And then you can sort of pick, right? And sometimes you're picking because the destination offers something that uh, we don't hear, right? So Usually, you're going to earn cost credits on a pass-fail basis. That, that takes some of the pressure off you because it doesn't have to be on a graded basis. So just put in enough effort to make sure that you pass it and then maximize on the experiential learning. You're going to, at the same time, immerse yourself in a new place, culture, and then make as many friends as you can and network widely and extensively. And the best part of it is that we're not asking you to pay extra tuition fees, right? So you're going to be just continuing to pay NUS tuition fees while you study abroad. So this is, this is a really wonderful thing uh, if you're considering, you know, having that opportunity to go abroad. Take a look at our student exchange programs, right? Okay. Now, uh, what have people said about the value of these programs? Uh, when you go abroad, of course, you're going alone. Sometimes you're going with a small, uh, you know, a small 
group of people, uh, you're probably joining international students also going to that particular country or that university. And uh, you know, so Mertis Ho, for example, here went to uh, Sciences Po in France, and she says it gave me a new sense of freedom because um, you do learn how to be responsible over time and space. Uh, so that is one aspect of what you're going to get. Uh, we have another person here who went to Mahido, quite nearby in Thailand. And she says, you know what, going there, she suddenly realized that Thai language is actually very difficult to learn. It's actually very beautiful, right? And she forms connections. She, she has meaningful, deeper conversations. And that's, those are the, uh, I think, the extras that we want you to get from going abroad. Now, I did tell you that if you wanted a shorter option, you can go for the summer or winter programs. Uh, and here you go, right? What you're going to do is you probably take summer and winter programs because you want to learn something unique that's outside your curriculum. Now, the duration of summer and winter programs uh, is probably only going to be about three to five weeks long. And the best thing is because you're taking it during your long vacation then you can gain all the benefits of being overseas without really having to uh, disrupt your academic schedule. So life goes on and then you ask the way it has been programmed, then take the vacation period and maximize the use of that period to be abroad. So make the most of your school break, make new friends, build international networks, and uh, that's how you're going to make the full use of the time that you have at NUS. Yeah. Now, of course, I want to show you some photos uh, because pictures do say a lot. And the first one, of course, you see Hanyang University there. It's really popular. Hanyang offers a very rich variety all across the board. Right? There are many, many courses. And if you don't want to take things for credit, perhaps you want to learn some poetry, there you go. You can also do it there. Right? So Korea happens to be a really, really attractive destination for our winter programs. And I think you know, uh, if you want to enjoy your autumn sonatas or winter sonatas, this is one destination for you. You can also go to Spain. I think the pictures that we have, Barcelona. Uh, I'll be going there also later this year. And uh, hopefully I'll meet some of you when you're there. So this is something that's good, right? We have, as I said, a flagship called the STEER programs. This is kind of dramatic photo, but STEER programs tend to take you for learning on thematic issues. So you can see that we take them down less well-trodden paths. You can go to Africa, uh, you know, this one was a, a shot of Mount Kilimanjaro. Uh, and uh, you're going to be learning something that is unique about the place, right? For example, when we, even when we had COVID, we took people on an E steer to Africa, South Africa. And, you know, we, we actually create a immersive experience for you uh, to enjoy and to learn more about uh, the kinds of uh, you know, history that Africa has. And so that, that's a form of enrichment that you don't normally get in any other program. Uh, for example, in China as well, the STEER programs, again, we design something that is kind of unique. Right? So here you can actually, uh, you know, we, 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 I have a colleague that designs a lot of STEER programs uh, that takes you to various places. Now, this picture for Chongqing, uh, this was our most recent one, very, very popular. Because what happens is that we integrate your learning some of these are very techy, uh, you know, at the age kind of uh, developments. So you're going to see innovations uh, that you probably will not experience in Singapore. And so in this case, for example, the industrial visits took them uh, to leading edge, uh, you know, I said lab facilities, right? So this is this was extremely popular. So we have Steer Chongqing, and then I think your next slide as well, Vitran. Yeah. Uh, so 38 students went. And uh, so it exposes you to all kinds of things, the way they live, the way they do, you know, run, run their courses, the way they're developing their industry. Uh, and uh, this is run out, for example, with colleagues from engineering. So this was extremely popular. We'll, we'll be running more for you again. But uh, more and more, I just want to tell you that STEER programs also wants to give you emphasis to growing regions. So uh, we're developing quite a lot of programs that are going to take you to uh, our region because uh, a lot of universities, a lot of international, uh, uh, you know, my, my peers from international uh, programs are trying so hard to bring their students to our region. And our region is seen as one of the big growth engines right, in the world. So uh, in response to that, we're developing more programs for you. And so I would like you all to consider when you come into NUS to join this and immerse yourself also 
yeah, in regional learning. It's going to open to you a whole world of possibilities. Yeah. Okay, so now if you are worried about how much these things cost, do not worry. We do have financial aid for uh, helping people go abroad. And it is very difficult to explain everything except to tell you that for different programs, there are all sorts of financial aid possible, right? Scholarships, bursaries, etc. Now, for each of these awards, of course, uh, they might have varying criteria, but it's not criteria that's too difficult to, uh, to match up with, right? And the best thing is that some of our partner universities and host countries are also keen to uh, promote internationalization. And so they might also offer financial support. Canada is one good example. They offer awards. I told you about the program that we have with China, right? The two ministries uh, of education are providing awards to uh, increase this uh, cultural and uh, immersive learning uh, in each other's countries. So there's a rich, rich offering here. And I would strongly encourage you to consider that. And with that, I probably have used up my 10 minutes and I'm going to uh, take your questions later on. Thank you very much for the attention. Thank you. Uh, thank you, uh, Prof Lam. And this is really nice. You can see that you, there's really a lot of exciting things that you can do by going global when you study in NUS. And of course, the other thing, the other level of support that we provide our students is we prepare them for the future. We help them to shape their future, we prepare them for the future. And that I will leave my colleague, uh, Ms. John Tay, to tell you, you about how to be more than ready and to be future ready. Uh, over to you, John. Thank you, Sis Song. Well, preparing our graduates for the future to meet technology and job market demands means being ready for change. Combined with academic pursuits, university life can be daunting. So at the Center for Future Ready Graduates, we are here to help students transit smoothly into university life and upon graduation, support our graduates to transit confidently into the work life. So we do this by having a four-year career readiness roadmap to support your personal and professional development. So students will be guided on the kind of resources and the activities that you should be doing uh, for each year of studies so that you gain perspectives, you build the right kind of skills and experience. Now to help our students kickstart their career exploration, we have Career Catalyst, which is a two unit foundational course. Each year, about 5,000 undergraduates in the first year, some in their second year, will go through the program. The um, students probably see some value in starting the preparation early because you'll be thinking, wow, I'm just in my first year about to start university and here I'm going through a career preparation program. But Starting early gives our students a longer runway to build your skills, to plan ahead, and to make informed decisions about some of the programs that you may like to go for. And as you can see from the slide, you also get to interact a lot with industry executives, which will help you gain perspectives about the industry and, lit and build connections. So we complement your interdisciplinary learning with real world exposure. When students visit companies, they have a broader and deeper understanding of some of the transformations or disruptions that are going on. And they see the use of new technologies and they are able to explore also to, uh, a greater variety of uh, career pathways. As you can see from the feedback of the students, some are also able to build rapport with the industry executives that they get to meet in such uh, company visits and took the initiative to pursue an internship opportunity. So these are the skills that we like our students to have. Be proactive, take ownership and um, take your um, career aspirations forward. So apart from company visits, there are plenty of opportunities to engage with employers and learn firsthand about um, hiring trends and um, uh, some of the in-demand skills. And you see from the feedback of a sociology major student, when she interacts with employers, she have a more open mind about uh, the various possibilities that are available. So indeed, 
NUS is the preferred hunting ground for our employers to hire and build their talent pipeline. Uh, in an ACAD year, there are more than 750 recruitment events. So while students are spoiled for choice, we do encourage students to still prepare, do their research for good roles in great companies remain very competitive. So students don't have to attend all the events, but you have to be strategic and thoughtful in your application. We also hone our students' cross-cultural competencies by taking them on overseas trip to ASEAN, China, and India, so that they have a sense of the emerging markets landscape, the business opportunities, as well as experience uh, different uh, work cultures. And each time we do a feedback survey after every trip, this is the only program that I see students commenting that they find the course duration is just too short. So in in a CAD year, you see how dynamic NUS internships are. We have more than 10,000 um, internships being fulfilled. So the interest is very strong among students and employers. And so competition will still be stiff. Uh, but for those who start early, and this is why we encourage uh, our students to start their career preparation and exploration in year one, so that they have the, um, a longer runway to also um, land multiple internships. This is important because employers prefer to hire graduates who already have documented experience in actual work environments. And from our graduate employment survey, you can see that 44% of students who did internship were offered conversion to full-time roles and 85% found them useful. So to a lot of our students um, in their first year, they may take an internship to just um, uh, assess their interests um, and, and test out some of um, um, the markers. And then in the second year, some of them may choose to undertake an overseas internship. And then in the third year, they may fulfill um, their faculty um, requirements because some of the degree programs have compulsory um, internships requirements or others may go on to take on a vacation internship that eventually give them a priority offers. And from the previous slide, you can see that the internships are not restricted to just local companies, but it, uh, a lot of our students also venture overseas for their internships. So to, um, moving on, to, if you would like to discover more about the various internship programs, we have a barcode which you can scan. Else, please drop by our booth and the various faculty booth to find out more about uh, different types of intern internships next weekend. And of course, we will not just leave you without any support. Um, so we have a wide array of tools to help you apply, to help you to, um, build your skills and uh, prepare for interviews. And all these are also supplemented by in-person sessions. Every semester, there will be internship briefings by the career advisors, working with the faculty coordinators to guide you on the internship process and to give you a glimpse of the market outlook. And there will be also booster workshops lined up to help you ace interviews and land your offer. So with such strong support, uh, you see um, that uh, students actually are able to overcome their inadequacies or transform the fears. And the wonderful thing is, all our students are assigned a dedicated career advisors. You can see the testimonials from our students who have benefited from um, the coaching and advisory of our career advisors. Our graduates are empowered to explore um, careers beyond their own fields of studies. Uh, some also start their own um, entrepreneurial venture and others have forged their career pathways um, in different parts of the world. Uh, likewise for um, Josian uh, Seto, she actually heals from Indonesia and she's able to get a very good uh, uh, consulting role uh, in Singapore. So um, 
a lot of our international students can also find uh, good career opportunities here. Well, we have lined up uh, exciting workshops in the coming week for you to get a flavor. We hope to see you on 9 March at our physical booth. So do come, see and taste for yourself. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. John Tay. I think this is very, very nice. And uh, I think all our students actually realize that the global exploration, career readiness, they are also interrelated that you can actually do overseas internship as well. And many students thought that I have not got into the university yet. And, and uh, why are we talking about career readiness? Now, in fact, career preparation starts from day one, not, not uh, just before your graduation. And actually, NUS take, takes in a very uh, holistic approach and train the student, prepare the students since day one. And now let me just finish up with one last bit of my slide before we move on to the Q&A. That is after we have seen all this, all this nice opportunity. How do we get it? So, and I will spend a few minutes just to explain to you about the application process. Now, the uh, since most of the students here are presenting Singapore Cambridge GCE A levels, so let me just explain to you uh, what are the admission requirements on the Cambridge A level. Now, our admission policy is a holistic approach that includes academic merit, meeting subject prerequisite, and also your interest and aptitude. So one thing to take note is that make sure that you meet the subject prerequisite of the degree program you are applying to. Like for example, if you want to study uh, uh, computer science, then make sure that you have the necessary H2 mathematics requirement because that forms a foundation for your study. And the details about which are the programs that uh, that requires, what are the subjects that you requires for that program, all this, you can actually find it from our website. On the application form, there are two aspects. One is the single degree program. You have eight choices altogether. And that one, you have to indicate your choices. You, If you don't have uh, eight, eight, uh, eight programs you want to apply to, you want to indicate five, that's no, not the issue. Then there, there is this bit about interdisciplinary pathway. We also have package together double major program, double degree program, major minor program. You can choose some of these. So this is the second part of the form, which is on multidisciplinary program. Pick what you need. You know, if you feel that you are focused on the single degree for the time being, no problem. You don't have to do that. For students who are interested in NUS college on the application form, there is a question that asks whether would you like to be considered for NUS college and you can check the box and that will lead you to an additional page that will actually tell you about what to apply and what are the additional materials you need to finish for NUS college. Now, so that is the framework. Now, essentially, single degree programs. Now, how do we decide whether that you will be eligible uh, that we can offer you. The first thing we do is that we look at your A-level results. 3H2, 1H1, GP plus project work. And if your A-level results are very good, that we are able to offer you, the uh, uh, to make an offer to you, we will make an offer to you based on your A-level results. But we do realize that if we do it this way, we may have missed out some very good students and uh, just that maybe their A-level results were not as good as they expected. So that's why we have set aside a substantial number of places to be uh, to admit students under aptitude-based admission. And to do that, uh, we need to make sure that the students has other strengths beyond academics and that enables them that we are confident that they will succeed in the desired course of study. So on the application form, you need to list out three achievements and complete five short response questions. Do take some care to look through some of these five short response questions and think through how you want to respond. Another point I want to make is that for A-level students, Singapore Cambridge A-level students, we have what we call the first choice bonus point scheme. 
Now, we want to make sure that students are very passionate about what they want to study. And the, the, the degree program they put down as their first choice is something that is an indication of their passion. So you will get a bonus point based up to 2.5 points for A-level students for their first choice. For example, let's say there's a degree program, let's say uh, engineering, and your rank point is 80. Then if you put engineering as the first choice, they will treat you like 82.5 when we assess the student. So that is the spirit of first choice bonus point. But if you put the, but your second choice and third choice uh, programs, we will go back to the original rank points. First choice bonus point scheme are not applicable for programs that need additional interviews or selection tests. Do we have scholarship? Yes, we have. We have five to 600 scholarships a year for Singapore citizens and uh, the flagship Global Merit Scholarship. We even provide additional funding for global aspiration. And the uh, NUS Merit Scholarship, we make sure that every student will get a chance to go for the student exchange program. And we also have sports and visual arts scholarship. Uh, scholarships for non-Singapore citizens, you can refer to our website. Uh, most importantly, we want our students to have the necessary financial support. So our, holist our holistic admission policy is merit-based and needs-blind. Financial difficulty will not impact the way that we assess you. We have a wide range of financial aid scheme, like we have the NUS bursary, uh, HECB, HEB government bursaries that will help you to take care of your school fees, tuition fees, and living expenses. If you intend to stay on campus, we have bursaries that is for on-campus state. Like what Prof Lam said just now, if you go for study abroad program, but you are a financial needy student, we have NUS awards for study abroad bursary as well. We also have tuition fee loans and study loans to help you for your studies. And I just want to emphasize one more aspect about our financial aid. We enhance it significantly since 2020. And under our enhanced financial aid scheme for needy full-time Singaporean students, if your per capita income is not more than $1,100, what we do is that the student will receive the government bursary, but between the total tuition fee and the government bursary, there is a gap. Don't worry about that. NUS bursary will top up everything for you so that you don't have to pay tuition fees at all. For students with PCI, not more than $1,100. For students with PCI, not more than $750. Not only you don't have to pay tuition fees, we also provide $4,000 for living expenses every year. And last but not least, we have what we call the Opportunity Enhancement Grant. To us, a chance to stay on campus at least one year to go for an overseas program. That is really a great opportunity for your learning. So we provide the Opportunity Enhancement Grant. The uh, Global Relation Office already has the bursary for, for global program but it may not cover everything for your uh, student exchange program or your summer and winter program. Whatever shop for, uh, you can actually use your opportunity enhancement grant to top it up so that we will actually bring the entire comprehensive NUS experience to all students. Now, I do encourage you to come for our NUS open house and uh, meet our professors, meet our staff, Look at our beautiful campus and I look forward to seeing you next Saturday on NUS Physical Open House. Over to you, Yanis. Thank you, Prof. Go, Prof. Lam and his team for your sharing. We will now move on to the Q&A segment and I'll hand the time over again to Prof. Go, who will be moderating the Q&A segment. Prof. Go, please. Thank you. Thank you, Eunice. And uh, it's very good that I have uh, two wonderful colleagues here to help me with the questions and answers. And I think the, the many students here are already very inspired by uh, the study abroad programs, the internship opportunity. And uh, in the signing up of the webinar, I noticed that uh, students had certain questions. You know, a, a typical question that they were asked is that, does it mean that all students will have the opportunity for study abroad programs. Are there limited number of places? And are there limited number of places for 
internship. And uh, the other questions that they are concerned about is that typically what year of study they will go for study abroad programs and internship. And how long are these duration? I think uh, you have already mentioned briefly during the presentation. But uh, telling the student exactly which year or roughly which year they will go to. And after all, I think you have we have uh, you have wet their appetite about planning ahead. So uh, so what well, Flam wants to go first and then followed by Miss Jonte. Sure. Yeah, sure. Uh, let me go ahead. And the question was a few things about how this works, right? So yes, we do have a lot of opportunities. And we are also responsive to demand. We keep encouraging you know, uh, our colleagues uh, to initiate. And so we will do that. But um, what we would like is for every student to at least tap into these opportunities. So it's really up to you. Yeah? Mm. Uh, we create the opportunities. You please exercise right, your discretion. Pick things that, that are going to enrich your life and go for it. Now, what can you go for? Right? Uh, the menu is huge. And it's up to you to pick, you know, the kind of program that you think will benefit you. We have very short ones, as I said, can be just, in fact, up to a week, right? And it goes all the way to, and you can take it to a year. Now, how do you plan for these things? What we have is that uh, at uh, GRO, if you go into our website, and I think my colleagues can put it up here, we can make that available. There is a planner to help you figure out when is a good time to go. Literally, the minute you are enrolled to NUS, when you finish semester one, you're ready to go for a winter or summer, depending on whether you're going to the Northern and Southern Hemisphere. So please start your journey, right? And when does it end? Uh, literally, before you convocate, before you graduate, you're still able to go, right? So the options are vast. It's up to you again. Now, but typically, we find that for semester exchange programs, which tend to be a semester long, right? Uh, we see people planning to go for it perhaps in the second year, Right? and all the way up to the first semester of the fourth year, with the bulk of our students going to the third year. Now, that's actually uh, out of pragmatism because usually in your final semester in the US, you may be doing your dissertation, et cetera, and you may want to then be based back here to get that work completed in a way that's comfortable to you. But ultimately, it is uh, up to you to plan this. right? And if you are not sure, I'll come to my office because we have a lot of uh, colleagues who mm -hmm. are able to help provide you the advice. Yeah. And so every semester you'll see us sending you uh, email messages. Do not delete them without going through them. We put in a lot of thought to tell you what's available, right? And so you, uh, you know, just take a look at what's being offered right? and the information ought to be there together with the kind of financial aid, right? Uh, mm -hmm. That is there to support you. So I think in short, we provide a planner to help you. The opportunities are vast. Please tap on them. That, that is a very strong messaging problem. And uh, I think planning ahead is the key message. Yeah. And uh, let, uh, since since my office runs the Office of Financial Aid as well, and uh, mm -hmm. how are you going to use the Opportunity Enhancement Grant to top up whatever uh, Prof Lam's office provide? Uh, this is where planning ahead is important as well because after you have planned ahead, then we need to compute what is the shortfall and that's where my office will come in. And uh, I, I think that there are really a lot of things you can do and uh, you need to plan ahead and I'm sure Ms. Jonte will tell you that there are other things that you need to plan ahead as well for internship and uh, also typically when, when, when do students go for internship? Uh, over to you, John. Thanks. <laughs> so as I mentioned, uh, NUS internships um, are very dynamic. Um, so we approach it uh, from uh, the uh, end goal in mind. So a lot of the companies, they do hire into their talent pipeline through the internships in the penultimate year. That means in the third year, after their third year, when students do internship and students perform well, many of them land priority offers. So if we were to then to plan it with that in mind, then the third year, um, taking up an internship that gives you such full-time conversion will be cr critical. So then it is crucial that uh, you do uh, the right thing in your first two years to build up that kind of experience and um, have uh, other internships to uh, make you stand out in a very competitive mm -hmm. market. So mm -hmm. students can then do, um, as I said, an overseas internship in the second year, or they can also take on um, um, the, the faculty programs. So 
most faculties would also have um, their own faculty administered internships. Um, some of them are part of academic requirements, so it'll be mm -hmm. longer. Those are also usually in the third year. Mm -hmm. uh, then mm -hmm. others, um, they work with CFG. We collaborate uh, on uh, how on the timeline and how to bring all these opportunities to the students. So strictly sp speaking, students can attempt internship in the first year um, to gain um, exposure. Then in the second year to hone perhaps cross-cultural competencies. Mm -hmm. Then in the third year will be something that's more intentional to get them into perhaps uh, a good program uh, that's advertised by the company, some of this management associate program. Mm -hmm. So they can do so um, throughout the um, first three years. And like Sao Kim say, usually in the fourth year, because they are graduating, mm -hmm. we also encourage students not to go uh, on exchange during that period because uh, some of them may be caught up for interviews, may be caught up for assessment centers. Right. And if you're caught up for such advanced interview processes, mm -hmm. usually if you're overseas, it's difficult for them to do it virtually. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So you can see that even in our planning, there's some alignment in terms mm -hmm. of the when is a good time for them to mm -hmm. be going to, uh, out and when will be an ideal time for them to be back to consolidate and finish strong. Mm. So, so within the the uh, so we 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 definitely hear that there is a lot of planning that needs to be done, mm. and uh, for all this planning, uh, do our faculties have staff on the ground that will actually help you? I understand that Joan, you have staff actually in every faculty as well, providing advice, and that that uh, maybe you'll be reassuring that if you can elaborate a little bit more on that. Uh, so we have our career advisors based in all the faculty. So they will coordinate closely with the dean's office to advise students on internship opportunities. So students can be assured if they have any issues, um, they can approach our career advisors to work on their resume writing, to prepare for the interviews. And if um, there are some anxieties related to the internship search, uh, talking to a career advisor will also help to elevate some of those anxieties. I see that that's wonderful. And uh, the 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 uh, I have a question for both of you, both of you <laughs> to answer collectively. You know, what are the overseas internship opportunities available in NUS? You know, uh, I think that is something that uh, we can integrate global aspiration and career readiness together. So, uh, uh, Salki, you want to have a go first before uh, Joan can add, add on? I, I think most of the programs that we have, right, uh, as we mentioned, there's the NOC. That would be a strong example of an, an internship-based learning and through mm. developing entrepreneurship skills, right? Uh, for the semester exchange program, it really depends on what you're taking because some of them would be able to offer you that kind of exposure elsewhere. So you need to do some shopping to make sure that it matches what you want. Uh, mm. But by and large, um, you know, ours tends to have a stronger academic flavor rather than internship flavor. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So I think maybe Joan can, uh, you know, mm -hmm, advise mm -hmm. more in terms of the global internships. Sure. Uh, may I invite uh, my head of industry relations, sure, Kevin, sure. because he has been instrumental in launching our NUS Global Internship Program. Kevin, please. Hello. Hi. Th thanks uh, for the question. Uh, yes. So overseas internships are. Uh, really abound to you, right? You can go to anywhere all over the world uh, to secure those internships. Uh, we do have uh, curated internship programs, uh, overseas internship programs for our students, where we actually match the opportunities to the students uh, for you as well. We do uh, uh, realize or aware that uh, sometimes as, as a student, you might not be uh, too familiar with the uh, immigration uh, laws or the visas available, or even uh, tra have trouble finding the accommodations when you're in those overseas internship uh, uh, opportunities. And that's where we try to help the club to get there. So I they see. will be guided every step of the way. Okay. The opportunities will be consolidated, publicized mm -hmm. to them. Mm -hmm. um, Kevin and his team will work diligently mm -hmm. at matching the interest, 
the fit, and then mm -hmm. provide the on-the-ground support. And even when students are away, they regularly check in with them. So we also have a risk framework to make sure that our students are safe while they are overseas um, exploring um, uh, work cultures and uh, sure, sure. embarking on internships. Sure. Basically, uh, NUS is well committed to to be to partner our students in various stages of their development, maybe you know, uh, student exchange, maybe internship or other aspect as well. And uh, you, you know that the the uh seems that many students are interested in all this study abroad opportunity and uh, internship opportunity or career development opportunity. So how do all these opportunity help in the holistic development of the student in terms of life skills, experiential learning, interdisciplinary perspectives, you know, that, uh, would you like to comment on this? So, I, um, should I go first? Sure, yeah. sure, sure. Yes, please, don't. So, um, at internships, students um, usually assign projects to work on. And some of these projects cut across different business domains. So uh, that's where I think that interdisciplinary training will help them mm -hmm. be able to understand uh, issues um, that may not be um, um, domain knowledge for their students, um, to be able to um, understand and, and uh, be equipped uh, quite uh, readily. And um, students also learn how to coordinate resources, relate to different personality types across mm -hmm. the um, business units, um, communicate their ideas, make sure that they are understood, um, achieve deliverables and contribute to productivity. So I think being in being exposed to the workplace um, gives them that confidence to know how to handle situations at work. Then I often also hear students tell me, oh, from the internship, they see that um, um, the, the firm or the team use a lot of computational problem solving. Mm -hmm. So when they're back, they plan to take courses in this area to strengthen um, their abilities uh, and skills. So I think that that also helps students to be more aware of the gaps. Mm. And then when they're back, they can practice they can hone their skills and be even better. Mm -hmm. and, and basically, they were informed by the experience in this internship, in the working experience that, okay, uh, we have all these, you know, courses available on campus using the unrestricted elective space. They can do something about that. So that, that is very good. And uh, 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 Saukim, what, what, uh, what are your take about uh, that question about life skills, experiential learning and interdisciplinary perspective? Yeah. I think for some of us who are going abroad for the first time, right? Um, that experience, I think, opens your mind. Mm -hmm, uh, it mm -hmm. blows up your mind because here you have to learn to adapt. You're put in a different environment. You're going to learn how other people do it and perhaps you do it even better. Mm -hmm, right? mm -hmm. uh, and that is going to be something that you put into your portfolio of skills. Right? Mm -hmm, and mm -hmm. it's something that only life can teach you. You mm -hmm. can't, I can't teach you this in the classroom. I can't teach you how to adapt, right? Uh, and, and so there is, to me, I mean, for those of us who have studied overseas, right, without having this, the benefit of study abroad progress, we really had to uproot, and, you know, as a four-year endeavor or something like that. Here, you are able to basically go to different places. I've seen some questions saying, how many times can you go? As many as you can fit into your planning, right? Mm -hmm, so mm -hmm. go, and that exposure, cultural, how to live, independently, how to learn in a different environment, absorb all these different exposures, get different stimuli, and then you work it through. Mm -hmm, and th mm -hmm. that is something no one can teach you. You got, you got to experience it. Right? Uh, I don't even know how to describe how, how wonderful it would be. Right? And then you, you have an opportunity to see what's the best of that particular region that you picked. You surely pick a place because uh, there was something that appealed to you. So make sure you maximize the opportunity to get even that, it's going to and it's going to really enrich your senses in a way that uh, you know just being in the classroom and being you know, uh, you know, maybe very you know rooted to a particular environment will not give you. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So open open up your mind and your whole you know experience to to absorbing what what this is going to give you. Mm -hmm. 
I, I, I couldn't uh, agree more with Prof Lam. I remember I had a student who went for a student exchange and he came back and told me this is a life-changing experience <laughs> for him. Yes, and uh, I, I, I couldn't agree more. And you mm. can see that we are actually having a variety of flexible options for the students, you know, to open their mind about going for uh, global exposure, the, to, to look at different sectors of industry, how they work, and... On the academic uh, front, like what I've highlighted, you know, we deliberately created the space of unrestricted electives for students to do second major, to do minor, to build up their interdisciplinary uh, capability. And uh, I think there was some, uh, let me just take this opportunity to, to, to explain further about double major and major minor combinations. Now, we do understand that uh, some students wanted us to have a more guided approach. So mm. at the point of admission, we already indicate that you can actually do, you know, this second major, double major combination, this major minor combination. But that one, I assure you, that is at the tip of the iceberg. We only pull out some of the more popular combinations and let students choose under the multidisciplinary degree programs. And we do understand that some students, uh, like what Prof Lam and uh, Ms. Jonte has uh, indicated, you know, you need to plan. After you come in, you realize that, wow, there are so much opportunities and you need to decide. So some students want to decide this double major, major minor combination during their candidature. Definitely you can do that. And that is the kind of flexibility we're giving our students. We allow them to do that. And then at the same time, some students, maybe at the point of applications, you indicate that you wanted a primary major in physics and a second uh, major in mathematics uh, or, or, or rather, or, or maybe a package one, uh, a package, a certain package one uh, that is a primary major and a second major in another subject that is uh, mm. from a different college. But along the way, you discover that you like it so much can you upgrade this to uh, uh, from a minor, upgrade to a second major? You can do that. And you are allowed to do that. And if you want to downgrade from a second major to a minor because you want to use the space to do other things, you can also do that. We are totally flexible. And last but not least, you know, while we provide package to the students, this is not all the option. You are allowed to have DIY. How you make it work, we were, uh, we were, you know, go along with you. So you can actually do second major uh, and uh, premier and second major combinations that you desire or you can, uh, or major minor combination that you desire. You don't have to be restricted to the kind of packages that we, we provide you. And so in, in short, this is like in travel agency, you have package tour, you have free and easy tour. We provide both aspects for the student and uh, in the interest of time uh, I will just let Prof Lam and uh, Miss Tay to give some final last words about advice to students how they should plan their NUS journey to benefit from the numerous learning opportunities available uh, so Salki you want to go first yeah so anyway uh, planning early is instrumental to getting the most out of your time at NUS uh, on our uh, side, we have what is called an NUS Global Programs Roadmap. And that roadmap is situated within the context of your learning here. So you can use that as a tool to help you. Um, and when you, I think, do not allow any preconceived prejudices or biases to limit mm. your experience here. Just know that uh, even beyond what uh, Prof Go is saying, uh, that the university truly believes in giving you a lot of pathways to develop yourself and we are here to help you do that right so mm. make the full use of it yeah thank you thank you uh what do you john yeah i agree with sal kim make the most of your university life it is not just about attending lectures going to the library labs or loo or those all this are very important but uh, this is also the best time for you to um, try something different to experience, um, um, to take risks, um, to um, perhaps um, take up something that may make you feel uncomfortable. Let's say if you feel that you are not comfortable standing before uh, others to pitch an idea or to speak, perhaps you can try to 
consider taking part in a play, in a competition, in some public speaking and devos. So train ourselves to overcome our um, probably our fears, our anxieties, our feelings of embarrassment. Uh, this way we, we grow, we become more resilient. And uh, we look back, uh, we, um, we can have very memorable moments uh, of our university life. Absolutely, absolutely. You no, know, taking risks is something that uh, in the real world, it will happen. But learn how to take risks while you are in the university. Mm. University, we provide safety net for you. And you can exactly. actually grow this way. Yeah, this is wonderful advice. Thank you so much, uh, uh, Joan. And thank you so much, uh, Sao Kim. And uh, I'll pass time, the time back to Eunice to close the session. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Prof. Go, Prof. Lam, and the state for sharing your experience, insights, and sound advice. I hope they've managed to answer your questions and clarify any of your doubts. With that, we've come to the end of this session. Thank you so much for joining us, and we hope that this webinar has been helpful. If you have any further questions, please send them through our Ask Admissions website. We will share the link on the chat box shortly. We understand that most of you have signed up for an array of open house events lined up for the rest of the week, and we hope that you will have a fruitful time ahead. Come visit us at our respective booths on Saturday night of March, and a wide array of talks and activities await you. So find out more information via the links and QR codes that are provided on the screen or on the chat box shortly, and we look forward to seeing you on campus. We also greatly appreciate if you could please take a few minutes to fill up a feedback form. You can scan the QR codes or access the link that we have shared. Uh, but your feedback is important to us, so please let us know how we can improve. So once again, thank you, and my colleagues and I look forward to receiving your application and warmly welcoming you to NUS. Have a great day ahead.